Okay. Hello everyone. Um, good afternoon uh, from the Philippines. Um, welcome to, to the fifth week of our Balongi Book Talks COVID-19 COVID segment. Um, for this week, we, we, we have two lectures. Uh, we had the first lecture last Monday on, on the um, ASEAN community responses of, uh, of, on, on COVID-19. And um, this afternoon, uh, we'll be having the, the last lecture of the series uh, of this week uh, with um, Dr. Dr. Chester Cabalza. Uh, we're going to talk about the multipol uh, multipolarity uh, of the, of the COVID-19. So um, this segment um, is uh, this segment is sponsored uh, and organized by the Partido State University um, through the Partido, through the Center for Partido Studies, uh, directed by Dr. Uh, Danilo Herona, Partido Institute of Economics, um, directed by Roland John Bulao, the Museo de Sarog, um, and the, Col the College of Arts and Sciences, headed by Dean Eileen de Basilia. Um, the Office of the University President, uh, Raul G. Bredesina. The Office of the Board Secretary, uh, Ms. Leanne Odonio. The Paspec Group, um, Museum Student Volunteers. And the Dinaga University uh, Social Sciences Department, chaired by Mary Joyce Pulao. So I'm Earl Hernandez and I'll be the moderator for this morning. Um, to introduce briefly our, our speaker this, um, this, this afternoon, so we have... Um, Professor Chester Cabalsa um, is um, he's the executive fellow of the Council of Fellows and the pre and previously the vice president for the Center of Research and Strategic Studies at the Development Academy of the Philippines. He's also a um, um, a senior lecturer uh, at the at the Department of Anthropology um, of the University of the Philippines and uh, dubbed as the the, the emerging father of the security anthropology in the Philippines. <laughs> uh, so we're we're so happy to have uh, Dr. Chester Cabasa with us uh, this afternoon. So okay, thank you, thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction, uh, Jan. Uh, thank you for having me here in the uh, Balongi Book Talks. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, that I I have time uh, to discuss about this topic on the uh, leadership vacuum, uh, multipolarity in the time of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, definitely, the reason why I chose this topic is because all of the countries worldwide are affected by this pandemic. So, meaning to say that uh, we are hoping that someone will uh, become the knight in shining armor, but it seems like uh, even the most powerful nations on earth are also suffering from this uh, plague. So. Um, the, the purpose of this uh, discourse is to let us know what are these uh, what are the effects of this to uh, the community of nations and uh, uh, definitely uh, let's try to contextualize uh, some of the uh, political security issues of this uh, pandemic and um, definitely there are grand strategies uh, where uh, great powers are trying to flex their uh, leadership and then uh, we heard a lot of fake news and then of course the, uh, some are also um, uh, taking some playing games about the uh, origin and, of course, the uh, spread of this uh, outbreak that became uh, 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 an epidemic and then later on became a pandemic. And then, of course, no, um, now we are um, in the quest of um, uh, of uh, finding the vaccine uh, to help this pandemic. But, uh, you know, later on in our discussion, we will see the process and, of course, the, the, the road towards that quest to, to the vaccine. Uh, for us to to help the uh, help this pandemic, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, I hope that uh, you will uh, ask questions later on because uh, I think that um, this kind of discourse is very important uh, in looking at the uh, political security perspective of the COVID nineteen. Okay, um, I'll try to show you the uh, presentation that I have. Okay, and um, please uh, feel free to uh, ask questions if. Uh, you have, and uh, later on, uh, hopefully after the presentation, I hope that uh, you will be asking uh, questions also. Okay, um, I already uh, started with the introduction and uh, discuss about the um, the uh, rationale behind this uh, topic. Um, I wrote, uh, I co-wrote a uh, paper with um, a colleague, uh, Mark Payumo, uh, about this topic. 
uh, a leadership vacuum, uh, multipolarity in the time of coronavirus. Uh, it was published in, uh, uh, in of course, in uh, analyzing uh, war in the states. It's uh, a new platform, and also it was republished by uh, Rockler also. Okay. Um, let's proceed to the next uh, um, slide here. Okay. Uh, you will notice here uh, a photo of uh, China and of course uh, the origin of the uh, uh, of the coronavirus uh, in Hubei province in uh, Wuhan city in China. And uh, of course uh, we know for a fact that um, um, uh, while all of a sudden China has become a buzz worldwide and um, aside from uh, it's a rising power, it's an emerging power, also some were saying that it's a resurgent power because it used to be a powerful nation even in ancient times and then and now all of a sudden uh, it tries to uh, play or maybe it has its aspirations to become superpower, uh, although benign at the moment, but uh, it has ambitions. But nonetheless, um, you will notice also that um, uh, it started from, uh, uh, we all know, it's a fact that we, it started from uh, Wuhan City and there were uh, different um, conspiracy theories of how it started. Uh, they were saying uh, they, there were uh, theories about the origin of it, whether it is natural or uh, man-made, because uh, some were saying that it started from a laboratory. Uh, you know, uh, you know, in pandemics, uh, there are many uh, dimensions to how to look at it. Remember during the time when, uh, during the colonial times, they used also diseases in how to spread colonialism and uh, how to conquer different nations. Uh, of course, we know that during the, in South America, uh, you know, we, we, we know all, uh, for a fact uh, how the Aztecs and some of the indigenous peoples vanished there because of the diseases that they uh, spread out. And of course, uh, this has been uh, uh, one of the uh, dimensions in looking at pandemic. But nevertheless, uh, uh, you will see a lot of um, uh, uh, conspiracy theories where uh, um, even before there were fake news also. So, uh, it's not something new for us to have all this. But uh, nonetheless, they were saying that um, um, it started from uh, non-humans, basically animals, non-humans to human transmission, and later on it became human to human transmission. And uh, uh, definitely, uh, we, we are all suffering uh, from this mess now. And um, um, why in Wuhan, uh, in, in, in Wuhan, in Hubei, China, definitely they were saying that uh, there were um, um, there are nearby research institutes uh, uh, of uh, virology and uh, some were saying that the virus was engineered uh, that, uh, that will be used for bioterrorism. So some, uh, those are some of the, uh, uh, of the uh, allegations. No? But uh, of course, um, even, uh, even uh, big, uh, uh, great powers like Germany, the US, uh, and some other uh, big nations are asking China to to uh, tell to the world uh, and become transparent uh, how this uh, coronavirus uh, got uh, uh, spread out to the world and it became a pandemic. So even them, and of course, uh, China was trying to uh, refute it, defend it. And of course, we hear a lot of echoes uh, of uh, defense coming for diplomats. So we, we have all these kinds of, uh, of uh, holy value and of course, definitely uh, uh, different kinds of uh, defenses coming from uh, different parties here. Okay, and, and then later on, we will see that from Wubei, from Wuhan, it spread out from China. And um, um, uh, those who discovered about the disease, uh, Chinese uh, doctors' physicians were silenced by the Politburo uh, back in December 2019 when they discovered about this virus. It was, it was an outbreak and uh, they were silenced. Some even died because of the uh, coronavirus. They got infected. And of course, no one knows about the the the, uh, the um, vaccine or even the, the medicines that to be prescribed. So you know, yeah, they try to to to, to prescribe these from uh, uh, experiments and these from uh, you know uh, there were different uh, uh, angles on how to look at it because some were saying because it's a uh, uh, it's a respiratory problem and then they use different kinds of uh, of, of 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 medicines uh, just to to cure this. But of course, uh, coronavirus uh, cannot be cured. Uh, yeah, but, uh, even at the moment. So uh, just like flu, uh, you cannot cure it, and although you can heal it, because we see a lot of recoveries also from this uh, disease, uh, still um, the, the best option so far is the vaccine, the uh, discovery of the vaccine. And later we later on we will discuss, um, uh, 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 we will discuss some of the uh, uh, examples of uh, how um, uh, uh, a pandemic was defeated through a vaccine. Okay. Um, 
Uh, some were also saying that uh, Chinese uh, scientists uh, started sequencing the genome of these uh, of of the coronavirus. Uh, of course, you know, uh, we know for a fact that uh, for especially for those who recovered from the disease, they get the uh, plasma from the so, and then they use that for for uh, for uh, for, uh, for uh, definitely for uh, uh, further um, uh, experiments uh, in order for us to get uh, to, to discover the vaccine. And um, you know, even back then in 2019, December 2019, I'm quite sure that uh, CIE knows about this already. That's why it was uh, surprising to see why the U.S. became an epicenter after China or after Europe uh, from, from, from China and then later on we saw um, major countries in Europe starting from Italy and then you have uh, France uh, and then Spain and uh, these uh, Mediterranean countries suffered a lot and then after that yeah, we've seen uh, the U.S. Uh, suffering from this, uh, from this uh, pandemic. And um, um, and uh, the first case, the first case, and the first case outside, uh, outside uh, the first case, uh, the first death outside China was actually in Manila. Um, remember that uh, I think that was in February nine, and um, at the time, um, uh, our um, our uh, health sector and the government was not aware of it yet. Uh, they are aware of it, but uh, they didn't that. Uh, Take it seriously because uh, uh, they still opened up our borders with uh, with, with China. We uh, there's still a um, there's still a, a flight uh, inbound and outbound uh, to and from China and uh, from other uh, affected uh, countries around the world. So uh, we have seen some of those. But uh, later on, the uh, and then there was lack of uh, of, of of contact tracing, and then of course uh, we thought that uh, uh, we, it would become like. Uh, the SARS or MERS cough that it would just punish her. But um, of course, um, that was the uh, intervention that the government used at the time. So it only took us to have a lockdown back then in March 15, 18, or 16. So it took a month. Countries like in Taiwan and Vietnam, these, uh, they have good practices, especially for Vietnam, where in Southeast Asia, they have a zero uh, casualty uh, in terms of death. And they have a very low uh, confirmed cases and high recoveries. Uh, meaning to say they were able to use a contract tracing very seriously. Uh, I think the reason why um, um, uh, Vietnam became very successful because uh, uh, of their experiences with uh, these uh, uh, respiratory uh, diseases already like MERS, cov SARS, and so on. And uh, if you try to look at it, um, going looking at the uh, epidemiological uh, history of the Philippines and uh, actually Southeast Asia, we could at least say that uh, because of our um, uh, colonial contact with uh, the Chinese, with the Arabs, with the Indians, um, uh, they were saying that uh, there was already herd immunity. So we were already immune uh, with, uh, the, with different kinds of diseases. But of course, uh, compare that to, to Western countries, uh, particularly Europe and the US, where we see a very high uh, number of cases, of, uh, very high uh, confirmed cases of uh, the coronavirus. Okay, um, and then um, from epidemic, it became a pandemic. And then uh, today, um, uh, of course, uh, we saw uh, the, a global lockdown, almost one third of the population went into that, that lockdown. Uh, and uh, also, um, um, the People's Liberation Army, there was a call that, of course, they have to, uh, they have to uh, uh, um, speed up the discovery of the vaccine and then uh, definitely, um, uh, of course, uh, to compete with the best. And uh, because uh, it's, uh, the mess started from China and they have something uh, to, to uh, definitely to halt this pandemic. And uh, they, uh, they are thinking that uh, the vaccine, the race uh, uh, for the discovery of the vaccine is very high, especially for the Chinese. So they really wanted to, uh, to, to, to take that first uh, step uh, in solving this problem that originated from, uh, from China. Okay, now, um, okay, for the, um, okay, for the third slide, um, I'm going to discuss about the uh, uh, great power competition between China and the U.S. We know for a fact, even before the pandemic, uh, the U.S. and China are competing from each other, whether economically, diplomatically, uh, diploma, uh, Diplomat, uh, 
through diplomacy, uh, trade, security, and so on. All the mentions definitely. And uh, the reason why they are competing because, of course, uh, in the real world, from the realist perspective, as they would say in uh, in the uh, uh, international theater, there would always be one leader. But um, um, uh, as the U.S. recedes in terms of their economic power, China is uh, rising so far, and we're seeing the uh, arrival here. And uh, it seems like uh, we are seeing a bipolar world from a unipolar world where uh, the U.S. used to enjoy uh, becoming the, uh, poli uh, the world's police and, of course, being the superpower. You know, when you become a superpower, you enjoy economic prowess, military might, and, of course, uh, the confidence, the soft power coming from your people. And uh, now uh, the U.S. is uh, is perhaps in denial that they have seen uh, uh, um, uh, arrival at the moment, and uh, and uh, China is uh, actually uh, has uh, quiet ambitions. Also, they have aspirations because of their uh, philosophy of national rejuvenation, because they were uh, humiliated for hundred years, and then of course uh, they really wanted uh, because of the new dynasty. The, Chinese Communist Party, uh, they really wanted to, they have the aim for national rejuvenation and definitely the Chinese dream under the the the, the, the stint of uh, President Xi Jinping. Okay, um, in terms of the economy right now, the U.S., uh, the China, China uh, is, um, is the highest in terms of the uh, non nominal GDP in the world. It has overtaken already the U.S. and um, the U.S. actually uh, has uh, debts uh, from China, um, although the U.S. remains to be the uh, largest economy in the world. And uh, although so we see some recession, especially now we see a uh, global recession at the moment, because the uh, Chinese economy is also faltering, plummeting at the moment. That's why they, do, uh, they are doing a lot of uh, offshore uh, industries. Uh, we see that in the Philippines through the Pogo, and of course, uh, they have their declaration uh, um, of course, reclamation activities also in South China Sea. So we see all those kinds of, um, of, 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 of uh, how we see that aggressive um, uh, maneuvering is coming from China. And then uh, in terms of the military spending, because uh, we are talking about the military might and hard power, well, uh, the, the U.S. remains to be the superpower in terms of military might. They still spend like $732 billion and like China, where uh, they are spending only for, uh, around $261 billion for their uh, military spending. And, um, um, and the problem right now with the U.S., of course, is um, they were like saying that uh, we've been trying uh, a lot, uh, giving a lot of effort in, uh, efforts in safeguarding the world. Of course, they are the, the world's police at the moment. And of course, uh, of course, we are, they, uh, they, they have protected Europe from uh, after all the two world wars were, and then of course, uh, they are expanding their cloud worldwide. And now they are um, asking for some uh, remunerations coming from uh, these uh, successful countries economically because uh, it seems like the US has been expanding a lot for their own protection. And uh, one of the, um, uh, one of the uh, impending or one of the, the, the the problems that we have right now with the U.S. is the termination or the scrapping or the abolition of the or application of the uh, uh, VFA and uh, of course the, uh, through the mutual defense treaty that we have and that will take effect after 180 days. So we have to, uh, to, to uh, observe what will happen after 180 days since we submitted that file, uh, uh, that, 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 uh, that termination uh, uh, to the U.S. and uh, definitely because of the uh, government's, our uh, government's efforts in leaving to China, uh, because we see some, uh, uh, definitely we will see as we go on with our, our discussion, because uh, definitely uh, we will see rivalry between these two countries. Uh, remember, we won the uh, arbitration case back in 2016, July 2016, but it seems like um, the movement towards China is very transparent, and we've seen that so far with our engagement with China. And uh, during the pandemic, we will see that uh, how these two countries are trying, are, are competing, or if not, are um, uh, exerting their efforts in uh, helping us uh, in uh, combating this uh, um, pandemic. Also, um, uh, of course, we have seen how China um, um, supported us. Uh, they sent their experts, and then uh, they had the, uh, the, the, uh, 
extended the COVID clinical uh, equipment and also uh, expertise, but at the same time, they are uh, maneuvering aggressively in South China Sea. We see some kind of uh, schizophrenic behavior here, but of course, we knowing uh, the People's Liberation Army Navy here, even or uh, with or without the pandemic, uh, China will continuously become aggressive in South China Sea. So we will see that it's like a, uh, an SOP for them, a uh, special uh, 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 operating procedure for them to aggressively uh, get all these uh, um, islands and a definitely militarized area. And of course, um, right now, uh, the U.S. is uh, facing uh, two uh, serious problems. Uh, the domestic problem with COVID, uh, because uh, they were hit after, um, they became uh, also a, um, a, um, uh, an epicenter after Europe. And then after that, they have also this um, ongoing uh, presidential campaign uh, uh, at the moment. And then, uh, of course, uh, they are, uh, they are um, uh, embattled with these uh, domestic problems there. And um, we know for a fact also that uh, China is trying to do aggressive moves uh, economically. There's no, uh, there's no um, global brand until Huawei came in. And it started from IBM, they bought IBM, and then uh, all of a sudden they have Huawei, and they're, now, they're number one when it comes to 5G technologies. So, so we have all those things there. And, um, and um, definitely, um, we, 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 we also see some, uh, uh, of course, uh, we know for a fact that uh, TikTok and the Zoom, uh, these are all uh, China-owned uh, companies, of course, uh, uh, that became a, a, a huge discussion or debate later on uh, worldwide whether or not it is safe or it is secured. And of course, they, they, they were able to refute it. And uh, definitely, uh, the U.S. also, uh, definitely, the U.S. remains to be as a, a strong power. It's a, it remains um, a superpower when it comes to soft power. Remember back then, they even have these, uh, these um, smart power. And uh, that's the reason why uh, China had to think about the uh, comprehensive national power at the time. And uh, just to counter the, the soft power, smart power of, 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 of the United States, uh, we know for a fact that Hollywood is third. But so far, because of the um, online streaming, binging on Netflix, we've seen also the rise of uh, the multipolarity in entertainment. We've seen the rise of, um, later we will be discussing that, we will see the rise of uh, other uh, foreign languages um, series. It became a global hit. And then, of course, yeah, the, the recent Hollywood. Um, uh, Oscars award. We've seen uh, a Korean movie uh, uh, having uh, getting that uh, top award so far. So it's changing, and we see some kind of multipolarity here. It's not only it's uh, diversifying so far, and of course uh, we know for a fact that um, one of the strengths right now of of uh, the United States is uh, through technology and the apps, different apps there because uh, they have the Silicon Valley, and uh, we know for a fact that. Um, Silicon Valley was founded by the Indian uh, Indians and, uh, of course, Chinese engineers. And uh, even in, uh, if you uh, if you read the book of uh, of uh, Thomas Friedman and also uh, Kishore Mabugani, uh, they were like saying that uh, most of those uh, graduating from top Ivy League universities in the United States uh, from uh, sciences to technology and so forth uh, have Asian roots. So it's changing. Even if you try to look, uh, if you watch uh, those. Um, Netflix series uh, produced in the States, you will see representation also. Uh, you will see a lot of Asians becoming lead actors, act, uh, actors in the series. And it. So it's changing. So even with this rivalry, uh, we see uh, a lot of changes so far. So later on, we will see who will win in this rivalry. Or are we um, uh, hoping for multipolarity? But later on, we will see that in the, in the succeeding uh, presentation. Okay, now uh, we're saying that um, the uh, Chinese Communi uh, Communist Party, the CCP, has been advocating for multipolarity as an expression of uh, the Chinese displeasure of the uh, American centric world order, where you have, of course, liberal uh, order, especially uh, um, uh, we've seen that. And um, because of this uh, disenchantment and frustration of uh, China, 
of, 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 of China towards the American centric world order, they, they really uh, they are uh, pausing for a multipolarity and uh, uh, knowing that uh, this, this multipolarity actually start, uh, uh, there was a precedence for this back in the 19th century where you have the competition of great power, uh, great power. so it's not, it's not new. Uh, we've seen that uh, in our history and uh, you know uh, these uh, concert of great powers as they say uh, it happened back then after World War II uh, of course uh, prior to that there was uh, we've seen uh, World War I in Europe, World War II in Europe and then there was uh, fascism, communism and then uh, all of a sudden we've seen also the Cold War, the ideological war uh, between these uh, two superpowers of uh, the United States and Soviet Union and then and now we are experiencing terrorism. It's a global threat right now also. But um, um, uh, they were somewhere also uh, insinuating that, uh, um, that, that this pandemic is, uh, is a terrorist act in itself because definitely people are dying. Uh, most likely the, the civilians, everyone is vulnerable right now. Uh, no, even, even, even each one of us can become asymptomatic or symptomatic with this uh, uh, with this uh, disease, so we have this kind of problem so far. Now, um, okay, um, because of this multipolarity uh, proposition, we're trying to, you know, uh, political uh, psychologists, political psychologists are trying to understand the, the, the of course, the uh, decision making behaviors, and uh, particularly during this pandemic of our world leader, leaders and. Uh, I have identified four uh, world leaders here because of the uh, of their power to decide and how they are um, uh, hurting their uh, people so far, their citizens, and in, in response to uh, saving their lives amid amidst this uh, pandemic. We start with uh, Donald Trump. Of course, we know for a fact that uh, he's running for re-election right now um, in the U.S. amidst the pandemic. And uh, the, uh, of course, uh, we we see a rising number of uh, confirmed cases in the United States, uh, especially in New York. But uh, definitely, um, um, uh, Trump is an oligarch, and uh, we know for a fact that uh, he came from a, uh, a rich family at a young age. Uh, his father was a successful uh, um, industrialist, and uh, definitely. Uh, we see how he progressed and uh, um, he really wanted to become uh, a military. That's why he went to uh, a military school back in college. He was very successful, competitive, sporty, and uh, well, that's him. And, um, but uh, things changed. Uh, his fate was not into military, but he was given. He, was, uh, he, was, um, he became uh, an heir of the family business and uh, also he suffered uh, from emotionally from the death of his brother. And uh, there were some, uh, some were saying that uh, even uh, their um, ancestry or if, uh, how their, 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 their nationality, they're trying to hide it because uh, they're, they're saying that uh, they're not, uh, they don't come from, um, from German ancestry, but uh, they're trying to hide it as, uh, uh, or they're trying to check it as a uh, 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 jacket uh, coming from a Swedish ancestry because of course uh, they have uh, some um, clients who are Jews. But nonetheless, um, uh, this, this, this kind of, we, he became president and uh, uh, a very powerful businessman in the States and uh, fine for the election right now. And uh, we know for a fact there were a lot of criticisms about, criticisms about uh, his leadership, not only in the United States, but globally, because of course we know for a fact that the United States remains to be a superpower. Okay, um, another um, world leader that uh, we are looking right now is um, um, uh, definitely it's, it's Putin, Vladimir Putin. Uh, he, he, uh, he, he was born from a poor family. Uh, his father being a, um, being a, um, uh, a volunteer uh, for the uh, submarines during World War II. And he fought against um, uh, definitely the uh, Axis power. And uh, his father uh, also um, became a grandma. His mother uh, was a, I would say it was a factory worker and uh, his grandfather used to cook for um, uh, Lenin and Italy. So I mean, it's a, uh, uh, he, um, he was destined to become a, a, a modern star or a modern, uh, uh, a modern uh, Stalin. Uh, and um, 
he became an AG US Pi later on. And in 1991, he became the deputy mayor. In 1999, prime minister. And then later on, uh, he was re-elected as prime minister or president uh, in 2012. So um, he, have, uh, uh, he became uh, the most powerful leader in the world uh, quite some time. And then, of course, uh, the, 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 man, um, the man of the hour right now is uh, Xi Jinping. Um, well, uh, in his younger years, uh, um, he went to the States and, of course, uh, he, you know, definitely uh, the uh, structural systems, definitely the American culture, he's exposed to that. And then uh, in 1983, he became a world a youth leader of the uh, Communist uh, Chinese uh, of the CCP Chinese uh, Communist Party, and then he became the vice president of China in uh, 2008, where he met uh, President Barack Obama, then President Barack Obama of uh, the United States. And then in 2013, he became the president of China, and then after that, he was also the chairman of the Military Commission and the General Secretary of the CCP. Very powerful. He got all those um, belts under. Uh, he, got, he got all those titles under his belt, and then uh, in 2018, he abolished the term limits of president. That's why he's very. Um, he's the world so far. Are you the world's uh, most powerful man, leader at the moment? But under his stint, you have seen this pandemic, and uh, some were uh, throwing a lot of criticisms. Blame games towards a decision team. Now, the third, uh, the first uh, leader, world leader that I want to discuss with you is, of course, a woman, uh, Angela Merkel. Uh, she is the German uh, chancellor, and um, she was born in uh, West uh, Germany, but was raised in East Germany by a, uh, a Lutheran pastor. Uh, that's why she gained all those uh, Lutheran values from his father, from her father. And then uh, during uh, her spent years, she excelled in uh, mathematics and, uh, and uh, of course, in uh, mathematics and Russian language. Extraordinarily intelligent, um, very, very, very bright um, woman. And um, she had a PhD uh, in uh, quantum chemistry. And uh, her theoretical background on um, quantum, uh, quantum chemistry uh, helped her uh, merge power and science. That's why uh, some were saying a lot of uh, uh, global leaders commend her for her scientific uh, method in, uh, in combating the pandemic uh, compared to other uh, compared to her uh, contemporaries and colleagues from, uh, from Europe. And uh, definitely uh, she became the leader of the Christian uh, Democratic Union and the Chancellor of, uh, of, of Germany since 2005 until next year. And generally she's the de facto leader of the European Union. So why we are discussing this because because we really wanted to understand her psychology, her uh, decision making, her values. Because so far, because right now the world is in a pandemic, everyone is so frustrated, afraid, and because of this fear, we wanted someone to raise and become champion, uh, to, to champion us and win this war against the pandemic. And so far, uh, among amongst these uh, leaders, we've seen. Uh, other styles, leadership styles, and uh, so far among them, uh, it seems like a, a lady uh, uh, has become successful in leading us so far uh, on how to uh, combat this pandemic so far because of our, of her um, of our scientific background and also because of her um, educational background. So some were saying that uh, it's uh, it would be better if leaders or if not world leaders should be scientists because generally. Soon enough, after this, if uh, if ever um, this pandemic will uh, will be halted because of the vaccine, um, we really wanted to see that uh, uh, future future leaders should also be scientists because this is not only the pandemic that we will experience. If not a pandemic, we will see a lot. Uh, we will see still a lot of epidemic and diseases coming, emerging diseases uh, that will uh, that will prevail in the future. Uh, we'll see what happens because of the uh, immune system that we have in order for us to survive. Okay, now the um, quest for find a cure for the coronavirus. Uh, we know for a fact that uh, this has been like a, a problem so far. And um, okay, um, I would like to cite uh, the example of the uh, smallpox vaccine. 
uh, that are generally eradicated. This is on the uh, um, disease that was uh, that is uh, that has been eradicated so far, uh, normally or um, naturally by a vaccine. Of course, because right now uh, there are some uh, um, how would I say it uh, in uh, uh, societies or um, uh, states where they use uh, diseases for bioterrorism and for their own interest. Right now, there are 58 candidate drugs for antibodies, uh, 22 for anti uh, anti anti antivirals, working cell-based uh, compounds. You have all this uh, um, data there. There are 66 candidates for um, drugs. China, uh, China uh, uh, solely, um, um, how would I say that, um, um, manufacturers uh, this uh, tablet uh, and uh, they, they call it uh, um, I cannot see it uh, from from my uh, um, uh, car in scene so far now and uh, this has been a possible uh, cure for COVID-19 uh, it became also an issue here in Philippines remember that when uh, I think the uh, chief of staff from the uh, from the uh, armed forces of the Philippines were asking uh, some uh, uh, pieces of medicines uh, from, from China, uh, uh, this, this uh, currency, uh, and the, um, the world also is de developing uh, around 115 vaccine candidates. So there's no vaccine yet, definitely. And uh, there are potential post-infection therapies for COVID-19. Of course, uh, the, the one producing right now in the States is the Fabipiravir, uh, 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 and then I think the most um, prominent is the uh, hydro Hydroxyquin, something like that. No? So um, we, we've seen that so far. And in, in India, uh, manufactures that also a lot. And um, uh, uh, India has been a powerhouse so far when it comes to medicines also. Okay, now um, we have the, the vaccine for smallpox there. Um, and we know for a fact that uh, it was uh, Dr. The, the British uh, physician and uh, medical doctor, uh, Dr. Uh, Edward Henry, who discovered, discovered that the vaccine for small attacks. Actually, it was a, it was a um, um, how would I say it? It was a beautiful accident how it happened because uh, um, then the word vaccine, were, uh, of course, uh, um, archaeologically speaking, uh, you know, if you try to look at the uh, presentation, uh, they discovered uh, small packs even back then, prehistoric times, during the uh, Egyptian, uh, you, you could have seen that in Egyptian mummies and so on. So thousands of years you have read that kind of disease. But uh, surprisingly, when, the, uh, when they discovered that vaccine, um, um, uh, the vaccine from the Latin word uh, came from, of course, uh, uh, they thought that it came from uh, from cow because of the vacra, no? but uh, some were saying that uh, uh, there was a misnomer for the small pox vaccine because uh, actually it came from the uh, horse uh, pox. And because uh, when uh, Dr. Hinger uh, tried to inject that from uh, the, uh, especially for the um, milkmaids, uh, they haven't gotten any small pox at all. But until such a time, he tried that to uh, a certain boy and uh, he got the uh, um, uh, cowpox, and then um, of course he got in, uh, he infect, uh, infected the young boy uh, with the cowpox, and then uh, injected it with the vaccine, uh, the one he discovered, and that, that was used for smallpox. Until such time in 1977, uh, smallpox uh, was halted; it died down naturally. But of course, uh, from time to time, we also we still hear uh, some. Um, um, cases of small tasks, but these are not natural. And these are uh, engineered, actually. Okay. Now, um, almost one third of the world uh, was in lockdown. So, what are the uh, the cultural norms that uh, we have discovered so far? You know, you have quarantine. Uh, from the word quaranto, and it means uh, something. Of course, uh, during the time when uh, Venice was very powerful, you had also the black uh, the plate or and um, that, uh, that quarantine uh, started from them. It used to be 30 days and then they, uh, they extended it to 40 days. That's why uh, we thought that 40 days would uh, be fine. But now it seems like in the Philippines, uh, it's almost, um, it's more than two months by the end and it will be extended. And it's all, yeah, it will be extended to two more weeks because of the, uh, they're trying to uh, 
to flatten the curve, the medical curve here so far. But I think that the longest so far was during uh, was in London. Uh, it was like for six months during the bubonic plague. So, um, but uh, they, they even uh, burned clothes. They had quarantine also, social distancing, although it was not reward at the time. But definitely, what are the uh, cultural norms that we have learned so far? Because of this pandemic, uh, you have quarantine, the lockdown so far. And then uh, you, you have, we have uh, from social distancing and uh, WHO collected it, it should be physical distancing because, of course, uh, social connects a bigger, larger. Um, uh, perspective here than uh, the physical because you cannot uh, uh, um, go near uh, physically. And then uh, they have herd immunity. The reason why they're saying that uh, there's a rising, uh, uh, there's a rising uh, cases for confirmed uh, uh, coronavirus patients because uh, they have to be immune with the disease. And uh, of course, um, um, and uh, they still dispute about that. And uh, there, uh, of course, uh, a lot of us, uh, uh, most probably um, the middle class, the middle to upper classes, they are enjoying the privilege uh, of, of working from home. And then uh, once they, 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 they um, and then we, uh, we heard also the amelioration for those uh, uh, poor families and uh, also the middle class families. And then, uh, of course, uh, just like uh, the, the book of, um, of uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez and the uh, entire uh, love and time of Paul Grab, we also uh, we also we also have seen uh, love and time of coronavirus. We've seen uh, virtual uh, virtual weddings, virtual graduations, and so on. So those are some of the uh, changes that we are the new normal that uh, that we are seeing right now. And of course, the word symptomatic, asymptomatic. We've seen that there are some patients who are symptomatic, and uh, maybe. Which, uh, we, we, we are also candidates of that, and uh, we've seen also symptomatic patients from uh, mild, severe to critical. And those uh, critical are those uh, who are in the uh, ICU, and those who are suffering from mild, uh, they can uh, be housed uh, in their own homes. And um, quarantine, the GCQ, the modified uh, uh, enhanced uh, community uh, quarantine, so those are the things. Uh, uh, that uh, has been added in our vocabulary so far because of the pandemic. And um, how will it end? Definitely, uh, there were some uh, theories, prognoses coming from um, historians, uh, social scientists, scientists saying that uh, it can happen, it can end in two days, medical, uh, because of the incidence and death uh, rates are plummeting because we have to flatten the curve. And uh, some are already immune about, uh, some are already immune. Although um, there's a no, right now, there, uh, uh, there were incidences for like uh, recently uh, some other um, countries who were locked down for, for months and then they uh, tried to uh, become flexible, relax uh, it after they lifted the lockdown. Uh, some, uh, they, 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 uh, there was also a spike of patients so far. And, uh, there was also a study uh, seen in South Korea that those who acquired uh, coronavirus can get can 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 they acquire the coronavirus. So it's really it's really uh, intriguing, and um, um, these are some of the um, problems that we are so you see right now because of the second wave, third wave, and so on. That's why um, it's uh, it's really uh, critical for for our leaders to uh, to decide properly whether to uh, lift the lockdown or to continue with the lockdown because of this uh, continuous rising um, or the spike of the comfort cases so far. But the key word here is, of course, we need a lot of contact tracing. Very, very, because that happened also in, in, in Vietnam and Taiwan. They were very successful in doing that. And um, another answer would be social. Well, of course, well, it's the epidemic of fear. All of us are afraid. Definitely. Uh, I'm quite sure that uh, even the strongest uh, or those who are assuming to become strong here are also afraid of what might happen to them. And um, about uh, and, uh, when the uh, disease wins, because it's a matter of perception, how you think that uh, this thing or this pandemic will end. And, um, you know, uh, it's a very ordinary also that uh, in our discussion in anthropology, we keep on saying that, uh, you know, people or humans evolve biologically and socially. And this is, uh, somewhat um, a process, uh, an evolutionary process also. 
And uh, remember that linear evolution of proteins will only have the proteins will have n. It's either the U5 or the I. So I think uh, we have to do a lot of um, we have to, to, to boost our immunity for us to survive. Okay. Um, now, although the uh, multi multilateralism is the oldest uh, old modus operandi of the one third world, and we know for a fact that uh, China is doing its very best to win this war by attempting to uh, produce the first vaccine, because uh, some were saying, especially the critics were saying that uh, uh, they have ambitions to become the leader, the world, uh, the world leader during and after the pandemic. But of course, uh, we'll never know whether or not it will become a China-centric world. It's still a question. It depends on what will happen after. It's premature to, 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 uh, to, to have that kind of prognosis, although a lot of, um, a lot of um, analysts were saying that it's not going to be a China-centric world, it needs to be a bipolar world. Some were saying that uh, 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 it's already the decline of the U.S. because of the global recession so far and because of the uh, leadership failure so far in the United States and the elections in Golden Bear. And uh, some of the citizens also are fighting for their rights uh, not to have a lockdown and so far. So it depends with the behaviors also. And, um, and uh, some were saying it's a concert of power because we have experienced that already back in the 19th century. So it's not something new where you have um, multipolarity in the theatrical stage. And um, even in the Philippines, it has also become a problem because we are uh, sandwiched by two great powers, the US and uh, China so far. Uh, we are courted by two superpowers. And uh, for sure, uh, we have to understand what, we have to know and understand what would be our national interest. Are we going for this, uh, um, uh, uh, how would I, uh, falling, declining power or to this rising uh, emerging power? So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's also a big uh, decision making for us, given that uh, it's in the middle of this pandemic. And uh, we know for a fact that um, China is doing a lot of uh, soft power, ideational power so far in the Philippines by giving uh, clinical aid. Uh, giving uh, equipment and expertise with us and then at the same time they have these propaganda, uh, propaganda videos uh, to show to us that we care so much but uh, nonetheless uh, people have different sentiments especially for Filipinos on how to understand this uh, kind of situation because uh, we see a lot of frustrations, disenchantment because uh, definitely we still have unresolved issues with China especially with our maritime and territorial, uh, territorial uh, issues with them and what more, especially that uh, we are also, uh, we also suffer from, from, from this uh, pandemic that came from uh, China. So those are some of the uh, um, um, reasons also why Filipinos are behaving or misbehaving like that. And then of course, um, those are some of the things that uh, we are seeing right now. So generally what we're saying here is that we are proposing for a multipolarity because we see a leadership vacuum there, whether or not uh, we should not rely so much with these big powers so far, especially if we are in the middle of a, in the midst of pandemic. We have to rely with our own resources, with our own talents, because well, there are many, many frontliners here, very dedicated frontliners, very uh, talented scientists, and uh, we know for sure that uh, everyone uh, wants to survive. And the only thing here is, of course, we, even if we survive, there are, we are still surrounded with uh, political uh, structures, and there will be uh, power competition, rivalry, and definitely the Philippines is not yet, um, uh, it's, not, it's still in the middle of uh, looking for which country to uh, follow because definitely we are uh, looking for a leader, a role model uh, that would uh, protect us and definitely that would lead us. So far, that's my talk. Thank you very much. I hope that you also ask questions so that we have more engaging participative uh, discussion in this webinar. Sir? Okay. Hi, sir. Um, yeah, thank sir. you. Yeah, wait up. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for that, um, for that uh, very insightful um, uh, talk. Um, at least we, we get the gist of what is happening in the world. Uh, 
arena because of this pandemic. So um, we can now uh, entertain questions from our. Are you ready, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. We can now entertain questions from from our participants and panelists uh, here at Zoom. Um, you may uh, for our participants, you may type your questions um, and we'll um, just read it. And for our panelists, you may want to, if you want, you may direct your questions or you can just type your questions if you have. So, okay. Sige. So, well, I guess sir, some of our participants are still uh, preparing for their question. So, mm -hmm. while, mm, while listening to, to, to the talk, uh, to your talk a while ago, um, we're, we're talking about um, um, a move to, to multipolarity. So, uh, however, um, from a third third world perspective, like mm -hmm. for example, the Philippines, where, where, or for some other countries, who has like for example, the China debt trap, with, with yung yung na ano ng China debt trap. So how do we? How can we like um, um, move for to on this uh, on this uh, on this uh, stage if we are trapped by China, you know, China power, right, whether right. soft power or hard power. Mm -hmm. You know, there are two conflicting theories here. Uh, one would uh, use the dependency theory where, of course, uh, uh, a small state actor like the Philippines will depend with the big power. And so far, we are courted by two, two superpowers. Uh, we're in the middle of that uh, competition, rivalry. And of course, we are confused, perhaps, baffled at the moment, which uh, power should we choose? Or maybe uh, in between, we can uh, do, um, how, this, uh, how are they, they called it in, uh, the, uh, uh, um, they, we, we can uh, go with the two powers. No, uh, uh, um, And uh, definitely, uh, the other one is the China threat theory, that uh, China remains to be a, a, a uh, a threat. Um, um, recently, um, uh, a colleague of mine uh, had a poll uh, where uh, he asked uh, how Filipinos perceive about China, and there was a very high perception of uh, China being a, uh, a, a, a serious threat in the Philippines, maybe because of our um, security political issue with them on the South China Sea, that's what we see, that's why we see that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of perception. But nonetheless, uh, right now, a lot of countries, especially in Southeast Asia, are doing hedging strategy. So meaning to say that uh, we don't rely or depend uh, only to one country. You can uh, hedge or uh, have a dual support with, uh, with, 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 uh, with other countries. We need to say that, uh, you know, uh, our um, bilateral relationship with China is not, on, is, is not only seen in our political or security relations with them, uh, it should be multidimensional. We also have, uh, uh, we're okay so far with our economic and uh, cultural uh, relationship with them because of the increased people to people engagements. And then, of course, uh, despite the, uh, the uh, plummeting uh, uh, fragile economy right now in China, uh, we still have uh, some support with them. But we're not saying that. Uh, uh, that's how it is, no? but uh, definitely uh, it takes uh, time, it takes two to tango to have a better relationship there. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we, are, we, also, we still have the United States there and some other major powers like uh, Japan, South Korea, European Union. So we need to say, but we're in the middle of the pandemic that's problem here. This is the twist in the story because how do we normalize our relations with these countries when in fact all of us are suffering from a pandemic and even those big countries where we rely so much, like, um, like uh, of course, uh, China, the US, Japan, Korea, the European Union uh, are all suffering also from, from, from these uh, disease. So, um, and uh, they, are, they are using their own resources, their money to, to, to of course, to combat this uh, disease uh, and uh, for, for their citizens to survive. And uh, we've seen that also uh, in Italy, where you have elderly, uh, even male. Actually, a lot of male are dying from from this uh, from this pandemic because, of course, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe my theory that, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, in, in in biological anthropology, uh, men are uh, hunters, and uh, in a lockdown, <laughs> how could we hunt? 
That's why our uh, immunity uh, recedes also. <laughs> That's why uh, women are surviving much. <laughs> That's how we see from the biological perspective, of course, other uh, biological uh, anthropologists uh, and other uh, scientists would expound on that. But uh, that's how I see it. That's why we're saying that uh, in this uh, evolutionary, class, evolutionary process, it's a uh, bio biological and sociological uh, um, evolution so far that we're seeing. But even our dependence, our relationship with these big powers are also evolving. Meaning to say that uh, one would think that we have to depend with them, but others would say that uh, we can hedge uh, because these are like strategies are evolving also. We see, because right now we see a declining power and then a rising power and we're, we're in between them. So it's hard for us, uh, maybe, um, and, and if we think or not of our national interest, then we have to decide which one of those should we um, partner with and put our uh, investment so far. Because um, there are many dimensions to look at it, definitely. Okay. Um, I guess a, a follow-up, um, well, um, is the... Is the approach that the that the Duterte administration is doing a um, can you say a good um, a good direction that that we do that that we're doing? The approaches that na pro the approaches na na pro a little bit of pro China, uh, the, the a sort of pro China mm. policy. Yung okay, if we try to look at the. Uh... Uh, prior incidents before the pandemic, of course, no, uh, there was a, the abrogation of the uh, BFA, uh, these three parts, a mutual defense treaty that affected the BFA and, of course, the EDCA so far with the United States. I mean, to say we have the following relationship with the US uh, so far at the moment, it's just that there was a pandemic. That's why um, we haven't seen uh, the, uh, the, the process or how it's coming so far. But uh, nonetheless, um, uh, we will see that after 180 days, the effectivity of that termination, uh, we will see that uh, perhaps by June, July, something like that, uh, we'll see what would happen. Uh, although there were propositions coming from uh, our diplomats, our policy makers, that uh, they really wanted to modify our relationship, our defense relationship with the United States. Because at the end of the day, the United States is still a major power and it is the oldest state ally of the Philippines. So we have affinities with them and also with the number of Filipino Americans and uh, the big number of Filipino community in the United States, we cannot get rid of that. They need to say they are part of our culture. They have assimilated, they were assimilated in our culture and, uh, uh, and uh, so far when it comes to the uh, GDP coming, uh, of course, from our uh, overseas Filipino workers from the States, they still give or they still uh, give back a big chunk of, uh, of their resources to us. So. Uh, that's how we see it. But nonetheless, there's also a, a rising uh, power where, uh, uh, where this giant neighbor is uh, willing to finance, fund our infrastructure programs. And um, it's a neighbor. And um, definitely uh, how we deal with that neighbor because it has a grand strategy to become a superpower also. Definitely uh, whatever his, uh, his uh, behaviors uh, and uh, definitely uh, his ambitions, uh, the Philippines will be uh, a part of that uh, roadmap so far. Uh, but uh, we still uh, cannot uh, conclude so far what would be the effects of that, although we are seeing some indications so far based from the uh, precedents and some of the uh, decision-making of our government and how China is responding so far uh, uh, in uh, their responses to the pandemic and uh, even with the South China Sea, because the South China Sea, West Philippine Sea is still an unresolved uh, issue, although uh, we cannot say it online, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the, 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 the real score there. But uh, uh, one would note that uh, we definitely feel that, uh, that China is, uh, has already penetrated the area and uh, we are trying to protect it by hook or by crook. And uh, definitely, even if we won an arbitration case against China, uh, that has become like a white paper on the or something like that. But ultimately, it all it, it will uh, it's still in our hands on how we fight for that. It depends with the decision making of our leaders, 
uh, with the narratives of the messaging that we are sending to China as we've got and with the principles that uh, we have so far and uh, based from the, um, the, 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 the sentiments of the Filipinos, the calls of the Filipino people, uh, they are still baffled, confused on how to deal with China because basically um, culturally they are assimilated with us because we know there are Filipino Chinese also here, they are the pillars of our economy, they contributed a lot to our society, but at the same time um, there are um, mainline, mainlander Chinese, Chinese mainland, mainland, uh, mainlanders uh, who have also abused uh, their um, their uh, presence in the Philippines. You have, uh, of course, no, uh, party uh, blame because of the existence of the Pogo, and then, of course, with their behaviors lately prior to the pandemic. So you have all these uh, cases there. But uh, it's still, um, we're still uh, figuring out. It's still a work in progress on how we deal with China. Because uh, definitely, um, uh, by 2022, we will have the presidential election also, presidential elections, and uh, maybe we still don't know if we are, uh, if if uh, the the uh, foundations laid by the current administration towards our friendship or our relationship with China, with China, will still be the same, or the next president will uh, alter or change that kind of direction. So it depends uh, with the, with that. But knowing knowing these big powers, major powers, or powers will work, they will uh, do. Uh, their responsibilities or they will do their part uh, in uh, fostering our robust relationship with them. So that's how we see it so far. And uh, the question there is uh, also what would be the post-COVID scenario, the world order? Is it going to be a China-centric world or still uh, a semblance of the American world order? Because technically uh, right now everyone is hurt, particularly Particularly the Western world because of the uh, of the uh, of the mess or maybe because of the uh, because of the effects of the uh, pandemic that have caused them so much not only for the number of deaths but also for uh, breaking the uh, for 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 uh, definitely for having a global recession at the moment and the loss of uh, losses of jobs of uh, their citizens. Uh, you, you, they, they have all these uh, uh, blame games for so far. And uh, China should also be accountable of that. And there was, I see uh, a comment uh, somewhere in the Q&A or in the chat that uh, where is transparency so far coming from China? If China be, uh, wants to become a superpower, this is uh, a litmus test for them to definitely to tell to the world that uh, this is how it started because there are theories, there are some uh, uh, propaganda or if not uh, um, uh, conspiracy theories uh, saying that uh, the virus is not natural, it was engineered or it was man-made. So this will, uh, this will be revealed soon and uh, will also, uh, you know, uh, historians will tell us later on uh, in the near future for the next generation what will be happened. But uh, definitely there are multi-dimensional uh, perspectives in looking at this pandemic. Remember also what happened to the the, the Bobon plague, and also why uh, the indigenous peoples in South America died because of the different uh, perspectives of bioterrorism. So we're saying they use diseases uh, to, to get rid of the people there, uh, something like that. So there will be different messaging narratives later on. But definitely, even up to now, we see those, uh, we hear those uh, narratives, we read them, and definitely uh, uh, truth will come out later on. But at the end of the day, if, if, if China is destined to take place as the leader of the world, then they have to work hard, really. They have to, some were even uh, stating that they have to, uh, they have to, uh, uh, to pay our uh, remunerations to, the, to, to, to all countries affected by, by, by the pandemic, because they're generally, uh, everyone is recuperating, recovering from this economic mess so far. And it seems like, uh, uh, China is under pressure so far, not only uh, economically, but of course, the, press, uh, the image so far. Uh, that's what the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, is trying to protect their image. And so far, because of course, they become a, a rejuvenated nation, of course, uh, it should be, uh, they should uh, exude a very good image to the world that, uh, you know, especially with their, uh, with their philosophy of uh, good neighborliness and harmonious society with the Chinese dream. So how can they convince the world that they have this harmonious society? It's a yin and yang. When in fact, all of all the uh, major, they have many, 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 there are many uh, 
dissidents as of the moment uh, with all those uh, promises uh, that China is forcing to be firm. So we, we, we see uncertainty so far, but um, we also hope that the, China, uh, the U.S. will recover because basically uh, it's still very, it's still a major power and the only major power to balance China uh, is still the United States. And of course, uh, if uh, we, maybe one of the reasons also why we are uh, that uh, current situation of their, because of their overconfidence, they thought that we are still on top of it. And then of course, uh, ultimately, uh, the seen some uh, in a denial stage so far that in terms of the power rivalry, because it's a, it's a continuing uh, competition between, uh, between these two powers. And of course, uh, there's also a uh, Middle, uh, there's also other actors like Russia. Uh, Russia is supporting China over the United States, although uh, in some other dimensions. So you have that, and uh, it's really uh, baffling for many, many uh, for different for many people, and for uh, how we see this uh, power relation so far. But uh, nonetheless, um, we are still um, digesting, analyzing the situation because uh, definitely. Uh, from from bipolarity, perhaps we will see a multipolar multipolar world definitely, and um, uh, it's not uh, this multipolarity will also become a transitional period only because at the end of the day there will always be one either. There will ne there will be never be a um, two leaders. Imagine the Cold War; we are competing ultimately one uh, one something like that. So. At the end of the day, from multipolarity, from bipolarity, then multipolarity, and then later on we will see bipolarity again, and then maybe we will arrive at the multipolarity. So it's anybody's goal at the moment. So may the best country leader win so far, and so uh, and and and, and uh, whoever, whichever country will will be that, it has to be responsible, and it has to play its own. Uh, act in uh, saving humanity because basically if 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 intentionally assuming that the, the 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 virus was manufactured or it was engineered or it was man-made so far then uh, where's the credibility of that country but uh, if it is it's really a pandemic although they were saying that uh, every century is a pandemic uh, uh, arrive and uh, test humanity definitely uh, we'll see what happens but ultimately, the race for vaccine, imagine what happened with the smallpox vaccine. It took them 200 years uh, to, to, to generally uh, halt that, uh, the, 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 the disease so far. And uh, we'll see what happens. Given that, uh, you know, in evolution, we're, we've, been, uh, we've been taught that um, the, the process is very fast so far because of the medicine and technology that has intervention so far in the evolutionary process. And uh, what we're seeing right now is a um, is a, uh, a visualization of that uh, speed of uh, uh, the power of uh, technology and medicine so far. And uh, this is also a test for us on how our, our human species on how human species will evolve so far. And um, it will take time for us to 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 to, to get in union with this. And of course, when we, we when we will when we see the end of this. It should always be uh, dual. It can be biological and sociological in terms of how we see it. Because, uh, you know, it's always been like that in evolution. You see it not only in one side, but generally uh, it, should be, uh, uh, it, should be, it should be seen uh, biologically and uh, socially. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, the answer na po yung, yung unang tanong kanina. Uh, there's, a, mm. there's another question from this Cato de Guzman. Do you think our friendship with China is being used to to manipulate our government? Oh, is it dangerous? Well, um, they have ambitions, and for uh, a great power to behave like that, uh, it becomes a threat not only for small state actors like the Philippines, but also to its uh, um, contemporaries, or if not uh, to, to to other countries, to big countries also like. Uh, uh, same as powerful as China, but uh, the question there it has always been the behavior of a uh, of a uh, of a superpower. They have to flex muscles. They have to uh, uh, to of course to show off their economic prowess, and at the same time they have to uh, um, 
uh, exposed their hard and soft powers uh, in different forms, uh, the instruments of power so far. But nonetheless, um, uh, we've seen, you know, it's like a schizophrenic behavior so far because uh, uh, if you try to uh, look at these statistics or if you uh, feel the pulses of uh, the people, the Filipino people here, just like what I keep on saying that uh, our relationship, bilateral relationship with China uh, is multi multi-dimensional. The issue of the Southwest Philippine Sea is just one of the dimensions. No? It's not the entirety of our relationship with China, but still, um, we become very sentimental with that. That's why I was like proposing so far that uh, uh, the West have the soft power uh, as a measurement on how to attract power. Uh, before, when I studied in Beijing, they have the uh, comprehensive national power as a measurement on how they gauge their power. Maybe for us in the Philippines, we should create uh, the measurement on how we deal with China on terms in terms of how we see power relations with China. It, definitely, it's still a big, uh, small power relationship. Uh, we, we used to question our relationship with the col colonizers from Spain, United States, Japan being asymmetrical. And we don't want that our relationship with China, if ever they win this over or they become a major partner, uh, with the Philippines, we don't want it to be asymmetrical because we should have learned from the past experiences from uh, from from those colonial periods so far, and we wanted because it's already twenty first century. We want an equal footing. We want uh, we want equality and uh, mutual benefits also from that. But based from the if but based from the uh, from the actions from the behaviors of China. Uh, it's, uh, it's really baffling, confusing because they act differently. They are very aggressive when it comes to, to their behaviors in the South China Sea. Uh, they've been running some Vietnamese and Filipino fishermen, fisher fox. So it has become a problem so far. And uh, we know for a fact that, uh, you know, Filipinos uh, being uh, feeling that um, they have the right. Because, you know, in terms of the soft power using lawfare, we're very good at that. We have, uh, we have, uh, we, we have, um, um, we have uh, won a case against China. Um, basically, that's the reason why China is also aggressive on how to tame us because uh, they know for a fact that uh, we have special power to our soft power on how to 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 uh, to, to deal with them. But uh, it also depends with the kind of leadership, with the kind of government, and also with the pulse of the uh, Filipino people on how they uh, uh, deal with China. And uh, so far based from our analysis so far, uh, based from the precedents and historical accounts and um, uh, uh, behaviors of China so far, these are the things that we are seeing. Uh, it remains a threat, yes, but um, it can also be become a benign uh, partner, uh, power. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what happens later on, uh, particularly maybe after the uh, the uh, maybe for 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 our next president, uh, whoever would, uh, he or she would be, on how he or she will deal with China, because Ch China is a reality. China will still be there; they will still influence us. They they will still uh, ex um, flex their grand strategies, and of course, uh, we will become recipients, or we will become uh, beneficiaries, or. If not, uh, we will uh, uh, we will also suffer whatever consequences they will have in the region because they are neighbors. They are giant neighbors. Okay, um, thank you, sir. Um, there's um there's a question uh, from Vanessa, but it was sent to my messenger. Um, with with the talks of soft power right now, um, can you comment on on the on the latest? Uh, wow, wow, China, the the wow, the wow, China mm -hmm. radio. Think, yeah, yeah, that was actually a domino effect because last time they had this, uh, they plugged this uh, propaganda video with the, uh, uh, I would say, isang dagat. No? There was a video last time where we uh, the, uh, in the middle of the pandemic because they really wanted to show to the Filipinos that they are a caring nation, they support us. They said uh, experts and they offer. Um, 
uh, clinical equipment to the Filipino people. You know, it's part of the propaganda basically. But uh, uh, the the program actually has been existing. The Wow Wow China, right, has been existing for two years already, and uh, lately netizens has, uh, has noticed it that. So I think it's a, a domino effect from what happened uh, previously from uh, uh, from the from from the video that uh, China showed to us, and uh, I think this kind of behavior is uh, uh, how would I say it? Um, it shows also how we feel with China because, um, like what I uh, I said earlier, there are uh, two dimensions on how we see it, uh, see the, our relationship with China, uh, looking at the theoretical level, no? because we, this is an academic discourse, uh, it can be uh, looking at the dependency, dependency theory that, of course, we depend economically with China, we have trade relations with them, robust uh, trade relationship with them, and um, so far, um, uh, we have Philippine Chinese also there, here in the Philippines, and they have assimilated with us. So those are some of the indications how we deal with China. But at the same time, I think the most uh, serious threat problem that uh, we have had with China so far is the territorial maritime cliffs that uh, in, in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, if, if China, this is my, 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 my comment here, if China can reassure us that they will not uh, harm our fishermen, and they will not contest their claims in our uh, claim islands in the West Philippine Sea. That's a reassuring uh, uh, promise that we will have a better relationship with China. Because, of course, anyone will not agree uh, to, to, to that kind of behavior that uh, uh, they will uh, take out all of our um, uh, resources. In, the, in our claim territories, uh, of course, we will, we are fighting for our rights also, and uh, the the mere fact that we won a case that is an indication that the uh, community of nations, the international community, supports us for that, and we should not take it for granted, regardless of how our government behaves, of how they deal with China. Maybe we are trying to be pragmatic so far, but at the same time, we won a case that is a, a fact. And it will be written in history, and that's uh, and that is a, a, a legacy that uh, we will uh, tell uh, to, to the next generation, and uh, we have to, we we should be proud of that, and uh, I am quite sure that um, the, the the current uh, administration uh, hopefully doesn't uh, uh, doesn't um, uh, quit with that kind of uh, rhetorics because uh, generally if we have a death uh, uh, um, uh, def defeatist uh, rhetorics, then uh, it's the end of everything. Okay. Um, there's a there's an insight, sir, uh, mm. from from Vanessa. Um, I think this is about the information and misinformation. Mm. Uh, there's an insight. Uh, the, the UP COVID nineteen pandemic response mm. team is, I think, also doing their own collecting of data firsthand. Mm. By, by working it out with the LGUs. So mm. this, uh, this way, uh, they can counter-check the DOH reports and can make models and policy with, policies with more resilient data. Uh, mm. Do you want to comment on this? Or? Well, uh, you know, uh, we are all waiting to find the, the vaccine, the cure for this um, pandemic, for this disease, actually. And uh, there's no... There's no excuse. Also, uh, we, we uh, for benevol benevolent uh, reasons or uh, in good faith, uh, those kinds of uh, partnerships uh, by our scientists or medical experts, or of course the exchange of scholarships, uh, are, are recommended so far. Because uh, if really this is a natural disease virus, then uh, we, as a community of nations, as we belong to one uh, humanity, and uh, I think uh, that is the, the objective here. We, we fight the virus as uh, as a nation of uh, as a global community. So I think uh, there's no harm with that, uh, with that kind of intention. Uh, we allow our scientists, our medical experts, to explore those um, opportunities and uh, dimensions. Because generally, uh, there's no cure at the moment, and uh, we are trying to do our very best 
to, uh, to, to, to speed up on how to save uh, people. Uh, we are all vulnerable at the end of the day. Uh, we have to do something uh, with this one. And I think um, um, borderless scholarships, uh, exchanges of expertise are highly recommended. We're not stopping that. Uh, remember how the Cubans also help Italians uh, from the very beginning. You know, those are really, uh, those are, uh, are, are commendable uh, actions so far. At the end of the day, uh, it's about empathy. It's about humanity. Uh, we need to survive. We need to win this war. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, there is a perhaps last. Um, um, there is a comment from uh, a question from from Professor Hadje, uh, okay. who's watching with us from Belgium. Uh, yeah, Prof. Prof. Chester, uh, could you say something about COVID and solidarity? Uh, second, mm -hmm. po yung COVID and fake news. COVID and uh, what's the last? COVID fake news. Ah, COVID fake news, right. Uh, I think uh, we start with the uh, fake news. Uh, some were saying, of course, no, uh, you know, in uh, in every epidemic pandemic, uh, there are, like I said, uh, there are political security perspectives also. And uh, some would uh, use uh, conspiracy theories. Remember, one of the conspir conspir conspiracy theories during the uh, outbreak, of, uh, coronavirus outbreak, was that uh, it was uh, manufactured, it was uh, engineered, uh, it was man-made. No? And... Um, the, some were saying that uh, the, 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 um, there were Chinese agents who were sent outside China to spread out the disease. Uh, some, uh, of course, uh, those are some of the uh, 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 disguising as theories, as uh, you know, something like that. Uh, that's why we've seen a lot of um, uh, spike in terms of the number of uh, confirmed cases so far, and that's why it became an, uh, a pandemic. And then another. Um, Another fake news. Uh, I don't know. Uh, generally, that's uh, how the the uh, conspiracy theories were were uh, were floating uh, so far. Um, and then the transmission from non-humans or from animals to humans, and then you have the human to human transmissions, and then uh, later on you have uh, the quarantine. So, uh, and then uh, there were fake news also, although. Uh, that um, China, uh, out of their uh, benevolent uh, actions, they, uh, they, they, they gave or they sold um, some uh, PPE or equipment, clinical uh, aids uh, to, to various countries, but uh, it's not that effective, or it, uh, generally it's defective. And, uh, and uh, it killed more people so far, especially from the uh, frontliners, from the medical frontliners. Uh, and uh, that needs to be verified also. And um, the, the, the first question was about, uh, what was the first question again? I forgot it. Uh, or, or? Yung about COVID, COVID and solidarity. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the COVID and solidarity, that is very important. Because there's a process in, um, in the quest for vaccine. Remember, uh, there were different interventions like uh, social distancing uh, or the physical distancing and then the quarantine or the lockdown. And then uh, those were some of the interventions used, but uh, ultimately, and then uh, we were like telling that uh, because, uh, because of these different uh, interventions, uh, hopefully we see a flattening of the curve. But um, ultimately, how do we all stop it? And then, of course, uh, science would tell us that it's only through a vaccine. But uh, there are many candidates, uh, candidate vaccines so far right now. The, when you do a vaccine, it takes uh, years also. Now, they're trying to shorten it because of the uh, advancement of technology and uh, medicine uh, for months. But of, of course, by 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 by. Uh, by standards, it takes two years or years actually. And remember, Jenny, uh, if you notice the uh, small packs vaccine, uh, to perfect it, it took them uh, 200 years, two centuries so far uh, to, to perfect it and eradicate it completely. So imagine that until, uh, so you see that kind of, uh, of, 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 of um, pressure and dilemma uh, from our scientific and medical communities to fasten and speed up this, uh, this, this uh, 
discovery of the vaccine. And then there's a process also when you do that because there will be a clinical testing also from a small number of clinical testing, about hundreds, and then you have little medical testing, uh, clinical testing where it takes thousands. And then uh, later on, uh, if uh, you have large clinical medical testing also for you need a lot of uh, thousands of uh, patients per so far. And also, uh, that doesn't enter because that's only the process. After that, you have also the manufacturing of the vaccine, uh, whichever vaccine means for the best vaccine that, is, uh, that should be uh, available, accessible uh, to the people. Because say, for example, if one country has discovered it, of course, naturally, it has to uh, secure or to see if it's on people first before manufacturing it, uh, uh, ma before uh, having a mass production and sell it to the world. What if uh, that, uh, that that nation is deviant and uh, would sell that at a higher price to other uh, countries that are not so good to them or to their enemies or something like that? So definitely, um, it would be a, a problem also. But um, um, manufacturing also is also another problem because it, uh, this costs millions of dollars also. And then the, the distribution of that vaccine later on. And then once it, uh, it uh, goes to different countries, then the next would be the accessibility. Do we still have money in buying for that medicine or for that vaccine? Because we have already consumed our national cover uh, because of the amelioration, because of the uh, extended uh, uh, quarantine. So those are some of the issues, economic uh, issues that we are seeing right now. And uh, hopefully, uh, if that's why the solidarity for coronavirus is very important because we think and act as one humanity. At the end of the day, we are talking about one human species here, and this is about the uh, uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. It's our species so far, and if we, if our species dies, then naturally, it's the end of uh, of this one, uh, unless there's another species that could emerge and uh, take uh, control of uh, of, uh, of our species. So something like that. Well, it's a biology, biological, ecological perspective here. So something like that. It's a it's an evolutionary process, but that's why. We should have to. We should. We should learn from uh, from history how they have combated this pandemic, how they survive it, because ultimately, at the end of the day, they have to help each other. They have to to have to have a solidarity, and so uh, they need to be. They have to foster solidarity here um, uh, for for the survival of humanity. But although they were still saying that uh, you know there will always be a um, a uh, selfish uh, gene out there because ultimately, definitely, if one country, if one big country uh, discovers the vaccine, uh, of course, you have to prioritize your own people before extending it to other citizens. And uh, especially if you have uh, lost a lot of money also, then you have to earn and then distribute or maybe uh, sell that uh, vaccine at a higher price. So that's why, that's why um, relationships of nations are very important. That, say for example, if China discovers the, the vaccine, and since we are we have uh, a budding close relationship with China, then for God's sake, China will definitely help the Philippines in that case uh, because of that uh, budding relationship. Well, if, if, if the United States also discovers it and uh, we are still trying to figure out our relationship with them, definitely uh, the U.S. will also uh, will, 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 will help us. No, uh, you, you have to look at those kinds of relationships. You have to study those behaviors so far because ultimately it's about uh, you have the pecking duck uh, uh, relationship. Huh? Okay. So relationships of states are, are important. So mm -hmm. and solidarity are important because it might cause for of the death of the Anthropocene. Um I guess kung wala na pung tanong or comments, um 
um, on behalf of the organizing committee, uh, the Partido State University, uh, and and sa ating uh, members ng panelists, si Ms. Vanessa, uh, Ms. Vanessa Romero, Ms. Atole, and Ms. Uh, Odonio, and uh, some of our participants na, na nakikinig po sa atin ngayon sa Zoom. Uh, Mabalus pong maray, uh, Sir Chester, for, for that very wonderful uh, uh, lecture this afternoon. Actually, evening na ngayon sa Pilipinas. <laughs> so, <laughs> 6 p.m. na. <laughs> so, so ma, uh, thank, thank you for, for sharing your perspectives on, on this issue. At least, uh, sana po uh, sa mga makakanood uh, would, could, could learn from it. And um, it it might uh, help uh, some of the policy makers both in the local and the, and the, the national uh, uh, policy making bodies natin. So, maraming maraming salamat po again, sir. Uh, Thanks for having po. me. Maraming salamat din. How do you say thank you in uh, big one? Mabalos. Just mabalos. Mabalos. Just mabalos. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. I'll stop recording. Yeah.